So today we're going to be answering the age-old question that many of you will likely have asked yourselves at one point over the course of your headphone discovery journey. And that question, of course, is which is better, Bayer Dynamic or Bayer Dynamic or Bayer Dynamic? This is Andrew with Headphones.com, and yes, today we're going to take a look at the DT990 Premium Edition. All of these headphones you see before you are DT990s Premium Editions, just with different impedances. So we have here the 32 ohm version, we have the 250 ohm version right here, and we have the 600 ohm version right here, which is indicated on each one by a post-it note. I'll discuss what this means, not the, not the post-it note, but the difference in impedance and what all that stuff means in a little bit. Um, but it's also worth noting that uh, they are visually identical, like across the board, these all look the same. Hence the need to use the post-it note to be able to tell them apart. Otherwise, it'd be very easy to get confused. And before you ask, we do also have a DT990 Pro Edition, and we also have multiple different versions of the DT880s. They're off screen over here, along with different versions of the DT770s. And then there's also a DT900 Pro X and 700 Pro X for the eventual bare dynamic off that's bound to happen at the end of this roundup. And unfortunately, Taryn tells me that I'm not allowed out until I finish testing all of these. So make sure you're subscribed to be notified when the next comparison video drops. I'm basically chained to the desk here until I finish that. Now, as as usual guys, if you're looking for the measurement of these headphones to do a deep dive, they've already been posted on the headphone community forum by the time you're watching this. So if you're interested in that, check the links in the description. And of course, make sure you guys stay tuned to the guides and review section there up on headphones.com for more information on just a wide range of different headphones and related audio stuff. So let's get started. Um, and I want to begin with the price. These can all be found anywhere from around $150 to $200, depending on where you look, sale prices, and so on. So these are the more, you know, budget-oriented Bayer Dynamic headphones. They have much more expensive ones as well. And these ones, along with the DT-880s, uh, they've been around for a long time. I remember when I was first getting into the hobby, and this was actually an option. I was often considered to be one of the alternatives that you could go if you weren't that into Sennheiser for one reason or another. Now, these are, of course, open-back headphones, uh, for those who are unaware. And I think there may have been some indication that these are semi-open, uh, but let me assure you that um, anyone sitting next to you will hear the dulcet tones of your aggressive black metal blasting through these. And I'm actually fairly confident that you'll be able to hear Burzum from across the room with these. Uh, for build quality, these are okay. And by that, I mean that while they don't feel that all that great in the hand, um, you know, they're a little bit on the rickety side, especially with this piece up here. Uh, they do give me, you know, the kind of confidence that they'll probably last a long time. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the overall design, you know, with this arm extension yoke system. It, it does feel like this is kind of cheap plastic up here. Um, but, you know, the actual cut material feels like very sturdy plastic and there's a mixture of plastic and metal with the yoke piece being metal. Of course, you get removable ear pads on here as well, which is nice. Unfortunately, there is no removable cable. Boo, boo. Boo. I think in this day and age, we could expect a removable cable. So hopefully if they ever do a refresh of this line, that's something that they will add. Now for comfort, let me just put these on, show you what they look like. Make sure the left and right, yeah, you get left and right indicators here. Again, ignore the sticky note or don't. This is now fashion. It's reasonably comfortable. Um, and there's a key difference between this one and the DT900 Pro X, which is that the clamp force of this one is nowhere near as strong. So it's much more forgiving by comparison. And then I do find that these have a little bit of that swivel going on that the DT900 Pro X uh, didn't really give me all that much. That was sort of my biggest complaint there. It didn't really fit my head shape all that, all that well. And these ones are great for that. And they're also really lightweight. So that's great. Okay, now let's talk about the sound. And those of you who are already familiar with these headphones may know the uh, discussion surrounding them. But for those of you who are unfamiliar, think about what your ideal headphone tuning would be. Then imagine the opposite of that. And there you have the DT990 Premiums. Okay, that's an oversimplified description and a bit unfair. But at the very least, these are not headphones for those who want a distinct sub-bass shelf, a clear and present uh, mid-range, and a smooth yet detailed treble presentation overall. So if that description isn't something that you're after at all, Bear Dynamic has something for you. Taking a look at the gross measurements, you'll see that all three versions of this headphone go after what we might describe as a more V-shaped sound signature with an emphasis to the bass and to the treble. And when I say treble, 
Yeah, this is this is a mountain of trouble, <laughs> literally. Um, like easily 10 dB too much, uh, at least with the fresh pads. And that legitimately is something worth taking seriously. Uh, you know, pads do change over time as they wear. You know, sometimes like even three to six month old pads will show a meaningfully different result. And maybe I'll see about doing some measurements again later on, you know, after a few months. But brand new out of the box, these are super intense in the treble. Uh, definitely too much for me. So if you're looking at this graph and you're wondering like, what does this even mean or what does this sound like? Uh, I'm gonna give you an analogy and uh, somebody else came up with this analogy. I can't take any credit for it whatsoever, but here is sort of the, the description that I'm gonna give. If you think about sound signature as kind of like a sandwich, you can think of the bass and treble as being the two pieces of bread that go on either side, or like the bass is the bottom piece of bread and the tre treble is like the top piece of bread. I mean, like don't eat it, but like you get what I mean. While the top piece of bread is critically important to a sandwich, the Bayer Dynamic DT990 is a little bit like adding slabs of bread on top of more bread to the top of your sandwich. Like just like a full-on bread stack. <laughs> and it is my opinion that this is madness. In any case, let's take a look now at the differences among, you know, these three. As I mentioned earlier, the recognizable difference here is indicated by impedance differences. So you have 32 ohm, 250 ohm, and 600 ohm. Now, there is more to drivability than just impedance, but this is one of the factors. Um, and to put it in simplest terms, for the 32 ohm version, you do not need a headphone amplifier. You may want one, but you do not need one to get it loud enough. Whereas for the 250 and 600 ohm versions, you definitely do want some sort of amplification in order to get it loud enough. And for reference, I'm running these off of the Vioelectric HPA V550 as the amp and the Matrix X Sabre Pro for the DAC, but you don't need to go that high end. Uh, there are tons of budget options out there, like the JDS Atom stack or some of the iFi devices or a Magni Modi stack. There's lots of great stuff out there um, that will be able to power these headphones sufficiently. So beyond the impedance differences, it turns out that there actually are some differences to the overall sound signature of each of these headphones as well. Before looking too closely at this, I just want to mention one thing. All of these Bayer Dynamic headphones have a chance of significant unit variation. This is something that I've sort of been, you know, made aware of recently. And so I want this comparison here to be more an indication of how these three individual headphones compare to one another and give you a sense of the potential range of unit variation because I've also seen results from other places of the exact opposite of what gets indicated here as far as the differences among them. Uh, you can see that they are all quite V-shaped, but out of the three, the 250 ohm has the least amount of bass, and the 600 ohm version has the most amount of treble. In general, it's the 32 ohm version that has, in my opinion, the most sensible overall balance, even though it is still a little bit too bright for me, uh, with the 600 version being downright insane in the treble. With the 600 ohm version right here, this is like listening at two completely different volumes, one for the treble and one much lower volume for the entire rest of the frequency response. <laughs> now, where I am going to give credit to these headphones, however, is that while the overall treble level is by far too much, at the very least, there aren't any, you know, major harmonic imbalances with lower harmonics being elevated over the upper ones. Um, that is usually where you get that sort of like really compressed kind of sound coming through. Uh, and this doesn't really have any of that anywhere. Instead, what you get with these because of the treble boost you get a very airy, open and spacious kind of sound. It's just that that comes at the cost of significant treble fatigue. The 600 ohm version in particular, as I mentioned, it's easily the most sibilance emphasized headphone or one of the most sibilance emphasized headphones that I've ever heard. So airy and open, yes, but at what cost, right? Is it really worth it, right? If it's fatiguing and you know painful to listen to. And I honestly struggle to listen to anything with vocals on this because the S's, F's and T's sound so unnaturally over sharpened. But I think the follow up question in a comparison with these is, is there any difference to the subjective assessment or the technicalities or any of that stuff that's difficult to analyze in frequency response? And I think importantly, is there any difference going from 32 ohm all the way up to the 600 ohm? You know, is it worth it to do this basically if you have an amplifier? And this is where things tend to get a little bit tricky to explain because it's likely going to depend on which amplifier you're using to drive these. You know, people will often like to pair high impedance headphones with tube amplifiers, for example. Um, or there's other unique output impedance synergies that people are people are chasing. Um, and in those cases, I think it may actually have an effect uh, and change the sound in some way. But off of a reference style setup like the one that I'm using, there really isn't that much difference um, in anything that we might you know, not be able to attribute to the fact that there's just a slightly different total balance to you know, all of these. 
you know, the 600 ohm just sounds brighter, for example. The 250 ohm has the least amount of bass, um, and it sounds like that. You know, I don't really hear any meaningful difference beyond that. And I know that that might be shocking to folks, because I think there's also, like, some narratives that exist around high impedance having the potential higher technical capabilities. In this case, all the differences that I am hearing, I'm able to attribute to the graph. And one other note on this, I did also try swapping the pads among these three to see if the tuning changes I measured were just due to the pad variation or something like that. And while I found that there was at least a slight difference, each version still had a consistent response. Um, so like the results were fairly consistent across the board. So let's now decide if the DT990 Premium is a good choice. Okay, I'm going to say generally no. But actually, that's not to say that they don't have their strengths. For anybody really chasing that airy kind of thing, um, they do fit the bill there. Um, they also have a very spacious presentation, which again is something where it lends itself to certain competitive gaming applications where people are all about that kind of thing. Additionally, comparing this against the DT900 Pro X, this one is nowhere near as blunted, or none of these. I mean, they're nowhere near as blunted and dull sounding as the DT900 Pro X. And as much as the DT900 Pro X has a far more balanced tuning across the board with better bass extension, and it's less about, you know, that sort of mid bass and upper bass bleed that these ones have, I still think these aren't anywhere near as dull and blunted sounding. So um, there is a sense in which this is actually better than the more expensive newer one. So again, I can certainly see an application for this headphone, you know, whether it's for treble heads or, you know, for competitive gaming. Um, you know, if there's an advantage gained by sort of an overemphasis to the treble or like that mid-range cut that kind of enhances the spatial qualities. Um, was it a fly? What the f***? You know, situations where an overemphasis to the treble is actually something that's desirable because there are cases for that. But at that point, I would probably just recommend Beer Dynamics' own Tiger 300R uh, or the Sennheiser HD 560S instead because those are also good for those applications. And, you know, I don't wince when listening to music with vocals <laughs> with those ones as I do with these. But in any case, let me know what you guys think about these in the comments. Am I just too trouble sensitive? Maybe I'm too trouble sensitive. Uh, but that's it for me today, guys, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.